Okay, hello everyone. So, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to calculate the momentum of a system. And we've talked about systems before, how a system is just any set of objects that you define. So it's a set of defined objects. And the importance of calculating the momentum of a system is, as we'll learn later on, the total momentum of a system does not change. So uh, that's very important to keep in mind. And if you have a system of multiple objects, each has its own momentum. So we could say that each object in a system it has its own momentum, okay? And of course, it's a vector, right? So we have to keep track of that. And in order to find the total momentum, we'll just write that as p totes, we're simply going to add the individual. We'll add the individual momenta. And if you want to get fancy, we could say that the total momentum of a system as a vector is the sum of, summed over each object, the individual momenta. So what that means in real life is momentum of object one plus momentum of object two, momentum of object three, so on and so forth. The only thing is you have to be careful, we're adding vectors, not numbers. So again, we can't just simply say, well, if one object is moving north and another object is moving east, and if this one has a momentum of 10, and if this one has a momentum of 15, we can't say that the total momentum is 25. That just doesn't work because we're dealing with vectors. So if it's, first, let's talk about if it's one dimensional, okay? So if we're talking about one-dimensional momentum, you add the momentum vectors, and you just keep track of sine. So this is pretty straightforward, okay? If we had, for example, a two kilogram object moving at five meters per second one way, and a four kilogram object moving at two meters per second the other way, well, the total momentum would be the momentum of the first plus the momentum of the second. And we just learned that momentum is calculated by mass times velocity and mass times velocity. Now, the reason I'm putting a negative for the two is I'm going to establish that to the right is positive. And it doesn't really matter what you choose, you just have to be consistent. So that means that my total momentum is going to be plus 10 minus 8. So the total momentum of the system is going to be plus 2 kilogram meters per second. Okay, and uh, so that's just an important skill to know for one dimensional cases. What do you do if it's 2D? Okay, so what if what if it's 2D? Well, we've done things like this in the past where we had to add force vectors, but if it's a two-dimensional system, you could use a table, okay, but you have to use uh, components or head to tail or even sort of a table of values. I'll show you what I mean. So for example, let's say that we have a case where there's a truck which is 1500 kilograms and it's moving to the right with 10 meters per second. And let's say that there's a car which is 1200 kilograms and it's moving up or north well, let's say it like this. Let's say that up is actually north and to the right is actually east, okay? And it's doing so at 24 meters per second. So this is like a bird's eye view. What is the total momentum 
of the system. Now again, we can't just multiply 1500 times 10 and add that to 1200 times 24. So you can't do this. No, bad. Bad physics monkeys. We can't do that. And the reason is again that these are vectors. So instead, what I suggest is you set up a table of values. And let's use north and east, but you could just as easily use, oops, hold on a second. Let's call that east and north, but we could just as easily call that the x direction and the y direction. It doesn't really matter. And we could say, let's say that this is a truck. Okay, so we can do the truck and we can also do the momentum of the car. Okay, and then what we're putting in this table are the components of the momentum. So the truck is going to have its mass times its velocity in the x direction, so 15,000, and this is all kilogram meters per second, and going north it's just going to be zero. Okay, and for the car it's going to be 1200 times 24, which I previously calculated Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. How much momentum does the car actually have going east? Zero. And going north, it has 1,200 times 24. And this is what I previously calculated to be 28,800. Okay? Now, both of these values are positive because of the way I set up my coordinates. And what this gives me is a total in the east direction of 15,000 and in the north direction of 28,800. So now try to remember what we did with force vectors when we had totals like this we made a new triangle. Okay so now I'm gonna make a new triangle and if you want to you can think of this as P tote in the X direction and P tote in the Y direction. So I have 15,000 going to the east and I have 28,800 going north. Uh, let's change that arrow to be a little bit smaller. Okay, and I can calculate my total. And again, if you look at this, this is going to be weird, but P totes, momentum total, is going to be P total in the x direction plus P total in the y direction. So this is p total in the x and p total in the y. And sorry, that's a little bit messy. p total in the y. And so this is a head to tail thing, right? You start at the very beginning and you go to the very end. So again, applying head to tail. Um, and then we just solve this for the hypotenuse. And uh, I'll spare you the details, but the value of the hypotenuse is 32,500 kilogram meters per second and the angle which you can calculate using tangent is 62.5 degrees and if you want to be fancy you would say that this is north of east but you could just leave it also at plus 62.5 so study this example very carefully um, it's really important to know how to deal with vectors in two dimensions, especially momentum vectors.